Ukraine launches an investigation after a mid-air collision kills three airmen, including a celebrated fighter pilot. Strong winds and heavy rain in southern Europe cause flooding and disruption and bring to an end the summer's searing heat wave. The Ukrainian authorities have launched an investigation after a mid-air collision between two warplanes in the west of the country killed three of its airmen. One of them was celebrated fighter pilot Andrei Jus Pilchkikov, seen here on the right, famous for taking part in dogfights over Kiev during the early phase of Russia's invasion. On the battlefront, while the Ukrainian army says it's continuing to advance after breaking through the Russian defense line in the Zaporizhia region, Russia says its forces launched a strike against an airfield in the Kiev region. Meanwhile, the Ukrainian government has confirmed the safe passage of a second vessel through the Black Sea from Ukraine's Odessa port after Russia's withdrawal last month from a UN brokered deal allowing the export of grain. The announcement comes despite warnings from Russia that such vessels may be considered military targets. And in Moscow, floral tributes have been laid to the head of the Wagner mercenary group, Yevgeny Prigozhin, after his death was finally confirmed following last week's plane crash. Russia's investigation committee have said genetic tests have confirmed the identities of the 10 people who died, including that of Prigozhin, although no details of what caused the crash have been offered. Ukrajina je z lidská zemská produkce tak významná, že je ty dopady toho přerušení těch dodavatelských řetězců poznáme všichni. Pečení chleba z minového pole je symbol, ale my bychom rádi, aby veřejnost převáděla symboly v činy a proto je samozřejmě důležité nejenom upéct ten chleba, ale také přispět na odminovací stroj. Dokáže za jednu hodinu vytvořit čtyři kilometry průchodu minovým polem nebo zaminovaným územím o 68 metrů. Odminovací systém Božena, který pomáhá ochránit život nevinným lidem, stojí přes 15 milionů korun, tedy asi 625 tisíc eur. Většina z této částky už byla vybrána. Na Ukrajině by podobných ale bylo potřeba minimálně tisíc. Jiří Skácel, Euronews, Ostrava. Prosecutors have opened an inquiry into two explosions at an unlicensed liquefied petroleum gas filling station that left two people dead 
and 56 people injured north of Romania's capital Bucharest over the weekend. The destruction was widespread. Some of the injured were firefighters who rushed to the station in the Crevidia commune to extinguish the blaze caused by the first explosion before the second occurred later on Saturday. Several people are in critical condition with severe burns. Authorities temporarily evacuated residents within a radius of 700 meters of the fire that started while gas was transferred from one tanker to another. As hundreds of people queued to give blood, Romania's president described the explosions as a tragedy and said he was profoundly saddened by what had happened. France's education minister Gabriel Attal has announced his country is set to ban young girls from wearing the abaya in state-run schools. The abaya is a loose-fitting full-length robe worn by some Muslim women. France enforces a strict ban on religious signs in state schools, including the wearing of large crosses and Islamic headscarves. The move comes after months of debate and is likely to anger many in France's 5 million strong Muslim community. The right has been pushing for the ban, but the left argues it will encroach on civil liberties. Millions of revelers gathered in London on Sunday to celebrate its annual Notting Hill Carnival. The two-day event is a celebration of Caribbean culture. Originating in the Notting Hill riots in response to racial inequalities, the festival now attracts a diverse crowd of families and music lovers. This year also marks the 75th anniversary of the docking of the Windrush liner, which brought migrants from the West Indies to the UK for post-World War II employment. Thousands of people in Washington, D.C. have commemorated 60 years since Martin Luther King Jr.'s famous I Have a Dream speech. His family and activists addressed the crowds to highlight the importance of the speech and how it resonates today. The weekend's gathering was a precursor to the actual anniversary of the August 28, 1963 March on Washington. U.S. President Joe Biden and Vice President Camilla Harris will meet the organizers of the 1963 March on Monday. All of King's children have also been invited. Simone Biles, who has won the most medals in the U.S. gymnastics history, took her record-breaking eighth national title in San Jose, California on Sunday. Her victory smashed a previous record that stood since 1933. This comes after Biles took a two-year hiatus from gymnastics to focus on her health, and become one of the most respected voices in the defense of athletes' rights. Her performance in San Jose took the four-time Olympic champion one step closer to returning to the Games in Paris 2024. Archaeologists in Serbia are hard at work excavating the Viminasium site near the town of Kostolak, where local coal miners found the remains of an ancient Roman ship earlier this month. Brushing the soil and sand off the wood, they unearthed the planks of a preserved riverboat, some 13 meters long and three and a half meters wide. Located at the Drumno mine, 95 kilometers east of Belgrade, researchers are rushing to preserve what is left of the vessel. For us, it's very difficult to find organic material, especially when it's not in the water. And we had the unfortunate luck that we found a Na sedam metara dubine nađemo potpuno očuvana plovila. Nije pronađen u celosti, naravno oštićen je dosta, ali drvo je dobro, drvo je u dobrom stanju, tako da izgleda odlično, zaista. The ship has been transferred to the nearby archaeological center where further research continues. Preneli smo ga i zakopali smo ga u pesak da se drvo ne bi osušilo jer je drvo jedno od najdelikatnijih materijala i ukoliko se osuši, ono se raspadne. Tako da mi na ovaj način čuvamo u stvari drvo. This latest discovery is believed to have been part of a river fleet that once served the city of Viminasium. Similar vessels have been discovered in the area and are believed to have either sunk or been abandoned. Experts say the ship may date back as far as the 3rd or 4th century AD, but are still investigating. Poslati su uzorci prošle nedelje u laboratoriju u Mađarskoj i za nekih dva, dva i po meseca mi očekujemo da dobijemo rezultate i tada više neće biti nikakve sumnje. 
to fund the dig, archaeologists are hoping to secure financial support from the Serbian government. They aim to showcase their discoveries in a museum close to their research center in Kostolak. Archaeologists have been working at Vemunasium since 1882, and researchers estimate that just 5% of the 450-hectare site has so far been excavated. Created in 1958 in honor of its Franco-Romanian namesake, the Georgia NSQ Festival has since transformed into what is considered one of the major meeting places for musicians and music lovers from all over the world. Dozens of concerts and competitions for young musicians will now take place in the Romanian capital Bucharest. The Georgia NSQ Philharmonic Orchestra got the ball rolling, with conductor Christian Muchalaru and Coutier Capuçon, one of the greatest cello virtuosos. They notably performed the concert in B minor, Opus 104, by Dvorak. Le festival Georgenescu est devenu, au fil des ans, un rendez-vous incontournable sur la carte européenne et mondiale des grands festivals de musique classique. Une reconnaissance internationale pour la Roumanie qui va accueillir jusqu'à fin septembre les plus grands solistes et orchestres du monde. À Bucarest, Frédéric Ponsard pour Euronews.